Feel a little snug, Michael? <laughs> yeah. I, I feel I a little snug. Feel close to you, Zach. Closer than I've been uh, we're, before in the past. We're grow- Through podcasting, we're, we're growing closer, both <laughs> literally and, and figuratively. It's great. Yeah. So uh, Zach's parents are in, ho- in town, and you may or may not know that uh, Zach's parents' house, which is positioned... Ideally close to your own house. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> Literally right behind. And, and the yards in this neighborhood aren't, aren't super big. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty close. So we do most of our recording in, in their house. They've been gracious to allow us. But I guess for some reason when they're in town, they would like the use of their house themselves. Yeah, I what, mean, it's, it's kind, of, <laughs> kind of selfish, but you know. <laughs> uh, and, and they also have two, what, what kind of dogs do they have? They have two dachshunds. Dachshunds. That are just a yip it. One, one is pretty chill. Other one is just yapping mm. away. And it would have been a, Probably a little, a little distracting. N- not optimal, suboptimal. Some might say for the <laughs> hey, you, podcast. You ever have a? You ever have? You don't have. You don't have pets. <sighs> this is a source up. Maybe oh. this is a separate banter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I Total will just table. say that I have desired to have a dog, but it just does not fit within five. The the, the six the, girls. Yeah, and and the you know, you know it, we, if we had a dog, it had to be inside. Yeah, we yeah, don't yeah. have like a big farm where it could roam. Mm-hmm. So. Um, We'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you are watching, I hope you uh, enjoy the change of scenery. And Michael yeah. had a really good point about the change of scenery. Yeah. So we got the green screen maybe four or five episodes into podcasting. Mm-hmm. And, and and for those who are only on podcast, you, you, this is going to be, you know, just bear with us because you listen to there. our lovely radio-like voices. Mm. And uh, But... Uh, for those who watch on YouTube, you see that normally I cast uh, Bag End behind us. Ah, and I've had questions like, when will that change? I don't know. Is it time to change? Is it become like part and parcel of the podcast? Like, Wow. You know, a lot of big questions. Yeah, yeah. Should So maybe we open it up to the, wow. the fans. Outsourcing. I like it. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you have some suggestions on what – or, or – would taking it away just take or away the, 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 the essence, yeah, the yeah. substance? Maybe some words we'll talk about in another podcast. <laughs> yeah. But th- think about it because uh, I'm sure we can do better than, than, than the Lord of the Rings <laughs> Hobbit stuff, just personally. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm uh, reading um, of a series of books. Yeah. And I'm taking a break in the series. And I just went back because I was kind of in the middle of listening to Andy Serkis okay. narrate Lord of the Rings. He's the guy who, who yeah. voiced um, Gollum. And oh, he's okay. been in some of the um, Avengers uh, okay. universe, cinematic right. universe. Uh, it is just like it's just like comfort food. D- does he do? Does he do voices too? Like when he reads? So does he like do the Gollum voice when he reads Gollum? It, it, well, I, I haven't gotten to yeah. Gollum with him, but he does a really good job. I mean, a really good job. Uh, like Pippin has an Irish accent wow. and stuff, and it and it's just uh, so good. And he even pronounces like. Um, a lot of people will pronounce a Lindell as a Lindell and still Ellendell. Uh, he gets that kind of stuff wow, right. The details. And I was like, Can you imagine if I was the reader? I'd just be butchering <laughs> things left and right. You would be so mad. You'd be, you'd be like, no one wants to read this long poem about Luthien <laughs> and, and Baron. Like, let's move, let's move on. Okay, so there's this ring. Because uh. <laughs> yeah, it does make it, whoever reads these books it makes a difference makes a whether you can difference. listen to it or you it's like i'm done difference. i can't do it i in fact i just pushed through that, probably why i'm taking a break i just pushed through this book in this series and it was one of the ones that was recorded earlier mm-hmm. and the narrator just does a horrible Man. job it's it's really bad and it's like i need a break from that <laughs> series so can't do it well lord of the rings well, lord of the rings <laughs> bag ends i didn't yeah. know that was the name of the yeah, bag but that makes sense bag ends yeah, bag yeah. ends yeah it's all, it's, it's all connected kind of yeah 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 very creative there, Tolkien. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, great. Well, we are going to jump into the 20th. 20th, I 20th. think 20th. Holy cow, Sermon of Roman. So enjoy this new setup as we go ahead and take it to the next level. From the heart of the low country in South Carolina. It's the Take Two podcast, where we take theology to the next level. Were you there, Michael? I hope so. Maybe. I mean, I, what, what was the actual date? Like March? Um, this is a quick Google search. Okay. So we know it's exactly right, but July 1978, according to Google, coming from the Wikipedia page on contemporary Christian music, that's the origin 
Yeah, so that that precedes me by like three or four months. October seventy eight. It was just waiting for you. Yeah, it's so, like I mean, just like prepared God, away. God knew he had to like you know <laughs> make this path forward for me. So he's like, we got to delay Michael's birth until you know. Wow, that kind of gets going. So why are we talking about Christian contemporary <laughs> music? Why why did we start there? Well, you know, as and I don't think did he do it today. In today's oh. sermon, I mean, we're not covering today's sermon. We're yeah. covering last week's sermon. We but, need to check this out. But I don't remember him going over a song today. Wow. He broke his streak. Wow. Man, he had such a good run. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we are in our, I think Zach said, 20th Got episode it. of Romans. It is going to be Romans uh, 8. I think it's like 5 through 9. That's right. And Joel starts us off with this illustration of a song from back when he was you know, a young man. Um, and Georgia Tech doing <laughs> doing campus ministry. That's right. Uh, and uh, it's by John Fisher. You know John Fisher? Oh, big John Fisher fan. No, I'm just kidding. I know, I don't know John Fisher. Uh, the lyrics are, I want to be a more righteous man. I can agree with that. I want to be a godly man. Good to go. Uh, teach me to do what I can to follow closer to you. I want to follow a different drum. Even if I'm the only one, I want to hear when I'm done, you did well, my son. And then I guess there's a chorus. Oh, won't you take a look around you, brother? Oh, why tell me why doesn't anyone uh, want to try anymore? And so Joel's point was this song um, not only was kind of like the start of the kickoff of the contemporary Christian movement, but it really captures this idea of the contrast between Mm. living in the flesh, being an unsaved person, and then living in the spirit. We've talked a little bit about uh, what it means to walk by the spirit or to to Mm -hmm. live by the spirit. And we've said that it's not a decision thing like, you know, do I take this job mm. or do I move this place? It's more about salvation. And we would say salvation is um, uh, being saved from sin's power mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. um, pardon me, penalty, then power, then presence ultimately. So we like kind that. of the yeah. th- three phase thing. And so it really is, you know, if you have been saved yeah. from sin's penalty, you're, you've been redeemed, then you are going to be sanctified. We would say you're being more and more saved from sin's power over your life. And that's what kind of these verses, kind of a preview of what we're going to be talking about. Yeah, that that <clears throat> helps set set the stage because like we've mentioned, you know, you think about walking the spirit, it is like, oh, is this God's will or not? But reframing it more biblically does have outworkings that yeah. do have implications to how you live, but maybe give you a little bit more more freedom mm-hmm. to think through these things. And I think he mentioned this. I wrote this down on my paper notes that you know in this section, you know, the flesh is mentioned. I think twelve times, and the spirit twenty times at least. I think this might be maybe talking about chapter eight alone, not including all the references to the flesh in chapter seven. Um, but this tension, mm-hmm. this contrast, this this back and forth, like that's what we want to feel because that's what Paul is really driving at. Um, so maybe I can read this passage for us and then we'll just jump in uh, and start tearing it apart. But uh, Paul writes, for those who are according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit, for the mindset on the flesh is death. But the mindset on the spirit is life and peace because the mindset on the flesh is hostile toward God. For it doesn't subject itself to the law of God, for it's not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. So you probably just heard it there. A lot a lot of back and yeah, forth uh, yeah. going this whole passage. Yeah, and just to point out to kind of reinforce, but and, and it's not like this is a hobby horse of mine, but I feel like it is so pervasive in Christendom today. Paul says, however, you are not in the Mm. flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. So it's not a decisional thing. It's if you are saved, the spirit of God has been given to you as a down payment. That's what Paul would say in Ephesians. And you are living by the spirit. Now, some of us may be living by the spirit more than others Mm -hmm. as we've walked this, this life and some less than others, but you are walking by the spirit. And then so... Verse five, the beginning of verse five says, for those who are according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. And, you know, I appreciate it when Joel, he'll bust out some Greek every now and then. And we have some Greek here, uh, phreneo, uh, that's the word behind set one's mind on. And the point there is it's bigger than just um, to when we walk according to, it's, it's, sorry, 
Proneo is what gets translated and it says when they set their minds on it, but it's like their whole mm. life outlook. It's, you know, our walk, our path. It's, it's a, kind of like, um, uh, the trajectory of our life. Yeah. We might read it in our context and think it's a small thing, but it's, mm. it's really yeah. everything. And like we've been saying, it's kind of a reality. Mm -hmm. You walk according to the flesh or those who are according to flesh, they walk that way. They set their mind that just, they go together. Mm -hmm. It's not that they chose one thing or it's just part of that part of that nature. And you can really look at, you know, Paul developed this a lot more in, in a couple different different places. One of these places would be Ephesians 4, 17 through 19. He uses this terminology, the mind of the flesh. And as, as he's talking about how the Gentiles walk, he, he's telling this Ephesian church, you don't, you don't walk this way. You, don't, you no longer act like these Gentiles because they walk with darkened minds. They're excluded from the life of God. They're in ignorance. Their hearts are hardened. They're callous. They, they have given themselves over to sensuality. There's impurity with greediness. But you didn't learn this by being in Christ. This is a right. totally different right. path. Yeah. Yeah. And so if the, that's the mind of the flesh, you know, futile, darkened, ignorant, hardness, callous, sensuality. Uh, we could con we could you know kind of add to that the deeds of the flesh and we see that in Galatians five sixteen says but I say walk by the spirit again that contrast and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh for the flesh sets its desire against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh for the for these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and like these things of which, and things like these of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So really wow. capturing both sides, the mind yeah. of the flesh, the deeds of the flesh. Yeah. And if you have the mind of the flesh, if you have the deeds of the flesh, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. It mm -hmm. is this, it's this reality keeping mm -hmm. these, you know, categories distinct. Um, Michael, what do you think if I tell you we've got trouble right here in River City? <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, yeah. I got this little thing here because he kept on saying, we got trouble. We got trouble right here. Do you know this? I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Yeah, that's, this is one of my notes during the city during, because, you know, uh, hopefully someone listening okay. would know that reference. We got trouble, but there was this movie called the music man. Oh, and this guy, he is trying to pump up the crowd about how serious this pool is. Cause he's okay. going to try to, to uh, scam them into buying some musical instruments. And he goes around, he's like, there's trouble. There's trouble right here. There's uh, trouble right here in, in river city. Trouble with the capital T that rhymes with P. You know, anyways. So, um, yeah, so he's, that that is my problem. Uh, if you start saying things that are in some you know popular musicals, Boom. my mind is going to be it's going to go out there. But yeah, so he was talking about the trouble that is associated with the deeds of the flesh. Wow. So yeah. I I think that helps paint a picture mm -hmm. of it. Get, kind of gets more more to it when we look at Galatians and Ephesians. All that is kind of connected to what it means to walk according to the flesh. That 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 is one category mm -hmm. that Paul is talking about. Um, we look at verses six and seven, Paul writes, for the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace because the mindset on the flesh is hostile toward God for it does not subject itself to the law of God for it's not even able to do so. So we start seeing some of this contrast come out more. He's, he's starting to talk about this, uh, uh, talking about the mindset on the spirit is life. And he's got this quote here by Rob Ventura and I'm blanking on Rob Venture, is he, is he a theo? This is the second quote yeah. that he's used by him. Yeah. So he must, he must have a book that either quotes him or a book by him. But yeah, I don't, I'm not like familiar with Rob Ventura. Well, he, he's got this he, quote by He's him. probably a brother to Ace. <laughs> they went separate. It was like two separate, separate paths. Very separate paths. <laughs> One was a theologian, the other <laughs> made a series of movies um, or as a character. Okay. He, uh, Ventura writes, even though non-Christians may not externally express enmity against God, may even think of themselves on good terms with him. I think a lot of mm -hmm. unbelievers would, would think that they're there. This isn't the case for whether they are actively shaking their fist at him or passively neglecting him, probably a lot of people, by not fleeing to Jesus by faith for salvation. Their disposition of heart toward him is one of downright hostility. I think that paint, paints a good picture of uh, really encapsulating that spectrum. Mm -hmm. It's not just these people saying, I hate God, but there is this passivity where 
you have this heart um, that isn't hostility, even if you don't perceive it that way. Yeah, that's really good. And he goes on because we, I think Joel wants to really impress on us how big a deal sin is. And um, I have Milliard mm-hmm. Erickson's Christian theology. It's And if you want a theology that's going to, systematic theology that's not going to necessarily say, this is exactly what I believe. He'll give you his opinion. Oh, yeah. But he kind of gives you the references, and he actually will ask questions at the end, like has blanks for you to fill out, you know, wow. based on this. But it's, it's really good. But uh, Joel was – so if you don't have that, get it. Um, I don't have it. You don't I'm have it. Amazon. So, so you should Hold get on, it. Hold on, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but Joel mentions that uh, he has five chapters – on sin five I mean, chapters, chapters on are sin. in this book it's a thick book yeah. it's probably yeah. this thick you know this you know man yeah it's 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 big uh but some of those were the nature of sin the source of sin the results of sin the magnitude of sin wow. the social dimension of sin and he pulls this quote out from one of those chapters it says such experiences with ordinary humans concussedness naturally stimulated me to do a good deal of thinking in such time as i had myself my ideas as to what people were like and as to what motivated their actions were undergoing a radical revision. People generally, and I know I could not exclude myself, seem to be much less rational and much more selfish than I had ever guessed. Not at all the nice folk I had always thought them to be. They did not decide to do things because it would be reasonable and moral to act in a way, but because that course of action suited their self-interest. Afterward, they would not find rational and moral reasons for. Afterward, they would find rational and moral reasons for what they had already determined to do. So, really, this uh, this realization of man, people are um, really sinful, and I think this is actually a quote. So, I'm going to keep going. He says, "My ideas is what people were like, and as to what motivated their actions, were undergoing a radical revision." Mm-hmm. That's a quote by Langdon Gilkey that Erickson quoted in that his yeah, and in I think- systematic. I think the more time you spend around people and you get more exposure, it is pretty amazing how quickly sometimes people you're like, oh, they seem like a great person, mm-hmm. and it's just like it's just you and them. It's like, hey, we should just do this, or yeah. you know, like I'm thinking of maybe trying to say something and, Zach, about how often we were together <laughs> podcasting. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> but even at work, you get you know, someone they're like, hey, what? We should just do this, and you're like, we probably shouldn't just do this, yeah. but it's easy because no one's there, kind of thing. But I think just talks about the reality of even these nice people you see in your neighborhood really, really have this dark, uh, darkness in their hearts. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I, I like this. He goes on to talk about how bad people are apart from Christ. And he, I don't know if he meant to, but he had a lot of alliteration on the letter D, but he said, you know, that they're very dark, distressing, despicable, um, they are dank. There's devastation, diabolical, distressing. So Man. all of these uh, adjectives that we look at what it is to live a life apart from Christ. Yeah. And as Pastor Joel is doing in this sermon, as Paul is doing in this passage, it's, it's just amazing um, how you, you can't read this and not see these contrasts. Pa- Paul just does this so well. It's like being in Adam, being in Christ, in the flesh, in the spirit. I think in the in Adam and Christ when we kind of tried to pull it apart and like just list everything mm-hmm, under them mm-hmm. because the contrasts are are so stark. But that's the one thing, I know you're sick of hearing it. Like that's what we don't want to miss, this contrast right. because that kind of right. helps us see, um, you know, what a miracle it is mm-hmm. to, to be in Christ that your lives are, are changed in such a dramatic way. Mm-hmm. It's this 180 flip. It's uh, with without Christ, you're just left to your own self and that that's a miserable, diabolical, mm-hmm. dark place to be. Yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, so now, so we did 5A, 6, and 7. Now we're going to go back mm. and catch the end of 5, because that's where Paul you know, is going to start picking up the Spirit and then pick up some verses below that. So 5B says, but those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Do you have any letters from when you and uh, Leanne yeah, were... Uh, some right here. Let's pull them out. <laughs> first dating. Oh, we, I, we, we ended a good job of, of keeping some, some yeah. letters. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Joel, uh, had asked Diane for some of those, but she's like, I, I got something better. I got my journal. He read from her journal on the night that they had been engaged earlier wow. that day. And there was just an excitement, like a newness, a, you know, um, 
and I didn't capture all that he said or, or take a picture, but it was just like, yeah. you know, there was this looking forward, this anxious looking forward mm-hmm. to um, their life together and how things were going to be, you know, changing and stuff. So. Yeah. And I think, I don't remember it verbatim either, but she was saying things like, my thoughts are fragmented. I am so excited. I'm, I'm, I'm so blessed. I'm rejoicing. And, and she just was like kind of repeating herself, but it is yeah, that yeah. idea that yeah. it's such a great thing. It's exciting and uh, mm-hmm. trying to wrap her mind around all of this. And if we can get excited about a marriage to Joel, I mean, that would, that's, then yeah. we should be able to get excited about a marriage to Christ and what it means to be in the spirit. You've been kind to Stone of the, Mountain? What's that? I have been to Stone Mountain. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Have you? I have not. Yeah. It, I, I, he made the joke. He was like, it probably still has the aura of yeah. that. And I was like, oh, I haven't yeah, been yeah, there. I need yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. It, it's pretty cool. Um, so if we're walking in the spirit and setting our minds on the spirit, what would we be pursuing? And, and, and this is good because this is like, what's going to be happening? Like, yeah. like these are a good thing to check practical mm-hmm. things to think about in your life. Yeah. So he just gives us a list of things like, Hey, these should basically be in your life to some degree, you know, you, each mm-hmm. everyone's gifted differently, but to some degree, these things should be in your life. And so one witnessing acts one eight, but you will receive power when the Holy spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. Yeah, we should be a witness. Also, your character should be transformed. Uh, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. And like you were saying, Michael, maybe we're all not going to be totally on the same transformation level mm-hmm. in all these areas, and, and right. there's probably different um, strengths and weaknesses here, but that's a good good litmus test as you are growing in Christ uh, to reflect on often. Yeah, and number three list was service, 1 Corinthians 12, 11, but one and the same spirit works in all these things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. And so really, I was talking about the, the gift of the spirit, spiritual gifts, and how they're given to us for service, that we should be using them for service. And I don't know if you remember, because this was has been a week ago, but he's like, and you, you know, really, I, want, I should add to this list. And you could see, I don't know if he was doing it on purpose, but he started adding all the Acts 242 stuff. Oh, yeah. Prayer, yeah, yeah, yeah. fellowship, um, breaking of bread, mm. you know, the word. But, you know, it, that's a descriptor of a church yeah, yeah, that's yeah. set on fire for Christ. It should be a descriptor of the individual who set on fire for Christ and who's living by the Spirit. Wow. So, so we're getting to this part of his sermon where he asked this really practical, very misunderstood question. And I think if we're going to take away some something here. This is a good place to take away. And it might not have a nice, you know, five word definition. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a little bit harder. And this probably speaks to why so many people struggle with this kind of terminology. Um, but what does it mean to walk in the spirit? And I think Jill did a good job of just pulling scripture mm-hmm. here, scripture here. I'm going to make my definition just fall right out of mm-hmm. scripture. And this is where I see this kind of terminology. So this is kind of what, what it encapsulates. No, that's good. Um, so the first one to walk in the spirit, it's a command that we're told to do that. Yeah. It's a daily act of obedience and faith. Walking in the spirit, uh, taking some of this from Romans 12, we're to set our mind on the things of the spirit, which means you've got to immerse yourself in the word of God. Um, the spirit of God will use the word of God and making known to me the will of God. Um, that That's really important because uh, I think that's where some of people kind of float all over the place. The spirit's going to work through the word. Um, prayer is important um, that the spirit works through prayer, but let, let it be tethered to scripture. Mm-hmm. And like we just mentioned, actually, we're to worship and fellowship. And then there should be this spirit of obedience. So uh, the spirit of God empowers us to obey. I think... Spirit of God helps us see the lie in our sin. Whenever we sin, we're, we have bought into some lie that while the thing that I'm pursuing is a good, it's better than obedience. And it helps us to see that so that we can obey. And so it's working in us, it's enabling us to obey. But be warned. Yeah. It, it, like, I think this goes along to exactly what you're saying. Um, we see this because um, it is a lie. Uh, and, and this is talking about what our flesh wants to do, because if you're going to walk in the spirit, as we're seeing here in in Paul's words, it's in direct opposition with, with the flesh. And so it's not going to be easy. There's going to be a battle. There's going to be some warfare looking ahead to the sermon we just heard. You know, you've got to be putting sin to death. Mm-hmm. It's like a, it's something that's not going to be easy and conflict will will arise. No, that's good. Um, 
Anything else you want to say on that before you go to verse nine? I, I, I think, I think that's great. Uh, let's keep moving on. All right. So verse nine says, however, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed could be translated since indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. So if the spirit of God dwells in you, you're in the spirit. Dwell. This just makes me think of the, the, the app, you know, yeah, yeah. where, where yeah. you know, you hear the word of God mm-hmm. over and over. Uh, and, and Joel does a great job of pointing out dwells. This is the first time we're seeing this mm-hmm. in, in Romans. It's a new, new word. It's going to communicate a couple things. Um, first things, first thing it's going to communicate is intimacy. There, there's this closeness. Um, he brings up, you know, the tabernacles in the middle of the camp. And as you kind of, even inside the tabernacle, it, it's the most holy. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of keep going out. And if you're unclean, you got to be outside mm-hmm. of the camp. And then, you know, we're all familiar with John 1, this great, uh, we heard it this morning, um, about the word, Jesus Christ, in the beginning, mm-hmm. was with God, was God, and he dwelled among us. Yeah. That, that word is tabernacle yeah. among us. Yes. So that connection is yeah. really good. Yeah, that's very, very good. And if the Spirit's within us, we're united with Christ, um, and we're united with the body of Christ. And I like what he said here, because sometimes you may not like being united with everyone, especially in your local church. It's easy to be united yeah. with the people you don't know. Like, oh, I, there's a... there's a, But sometimes when you, like you said, you're rubbing shoulders with people, yeah, you know, there, conflict can happen. We're, we're sinful. Uh, yeah. If you find a perfect church, don't join it because you'll, <laughs> you'll mess ruin it. it. <laughs> you'll ruin it. That's right. Um, so, you know, CBC is not perfect. And, um, but we are united with each other serving Christ. First Corinthians uh, talks about us being a temple of God. Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? There's our word again. If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him for the temple of God is holy. And that is what you are. So we're supposed to be set apart. Yeah, no, I I like that a lot because I don't think people think about think about all the implications um, from from these these terms. But I like that dwell intimacy union. We're we're connected. That's going to influence how you live your life. How you're going to live your life with each other. Um, so good, and I and I think he captured it well. Some of these passages that talk about the temple of God. It really is a collective. Mm-hmm. You know, we're the temple of God. It's not just you know, all all everything gets so individualized and in, you know Western Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he ends with, or getting towards the end, goes with the with the Valley of Vision, a yeah. classic. Yeah. I, 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 you want to read it? Let's let's, let's read it. it. It's longer, but I think it's good. Uh, maybe I'll read a little bit and then tap out, and you can jump in. Great, so, I love so, it. So, yeah, so we don't just get tired of of my voice. Yeah, 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 let's do it. All right. So this is the Valley of Vision, and um, it's titled Spiritus Sanctus, which means Holy Spirit. So again, this is a Puritan prayer. It says, as the sun is full of light, the ocean full of water, heaven full of glory, so may my heart be full of thee. Vain are the divine purposes of love and the redemption wrought by Jesus, except thou work within, regenerating by thy power, giving me eyes to see Jesus, showing me the realities of the unseen world, Give me thyself without measure as an unimpaired fountain, as inexhaustible riches. I bewail my coldness, poverty, emptiness, imperfect vision, languid service, prayerless prayers, praiseless praise. Suffer me not to grieve or resist thee. Come as power to expel every rebel lust, to reign supreme and keep me thine. Come as teacher, leading me into all truth, filling me with all understanding. Come as love, that I may adore the Father and love him as my all. Come as joy, to dwell in me, move in me, animate me. Come as light, illuminating the scripture, molding me in its laws. Come as sanctifier, body, soul, and spirit, holy thine. Come as helper, with strength to bless and keep, directing my every step. Come as beautifier, bringing order out of confusion, loveliness out of chaos. Magnify to me thy glory by being magnified in me and make me redolent of thy fragrance. Very good. All right. 
I think those are great. Good meditation. I should read them more uh, yeah. often myself, but you know that, that's good. But that's a great way as we kind of segue into application. Um, how, how do you define mm-hmm. walking in the spirit? That's a good thing to think about because if you have to think about it, you probably are meditate out. You're kind of if you can mm-hmm. give a good definition. You've been thinking about this, and and Pastor Joel even you know welcomes change mind, tweak mind, show me how you're mm-hmm. you know dealing with this. How where are you going in Scripture? to have a better understanding of this uh, ter- phrase, walking in the Spirit. Yeah, and can you speak confidently? Do you see evidences that you are walking in the Spirit? Uh, do you you know, sense the Spirit indwelling in you, helping you to be obedient, helping you to you know, live a life that you know, is away from the mind and the, the deeds of the flesh, but really set on the mind and the deeds of the, of the Spirit? Application number three, what misconceptions do you see in the church regarding this phrase, walking in the spirit, because they're out there. I've thought misconception before, you know, as we try to like deal with what, what is, what does this mean? What are some wrong ways to think about it? And lastly, application four, really to think about why do you think Paul is stressing so strongly this difference between mm-hmm. walking in the flesh, walking in the spirit. Cause he really has given really, you could maybe count all mm-hmm. of seven and the beginning of eight all over to this idea. That's, and if you're thinking, you know, Romans, has 16 chapters that that's a lot of ink and yeah. for those that mm-hmm. particular thing. So it's a right. big deal yeah yeah that's it all right so i think we're wrapped up with the flesh versus the spirit this was walking in the spirit part two um anything else to add i got nothing all right that's our take thanks for listening to take two find us wherever you find podcasts and on youtube for those who want to watch our video cast.